What's going on, Dark Magical community, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I have the long-awaited return of my own personal Dark Magician deck, and this is kind of crazy. What's up guys and welcome back to the Dark Magician content. Uh, if you've been around for a while, you know that I've been off of the deck for a little bit. I've been trying some other things, trying out some heroes, uh, you know, Dark Law for game, let's go. But um, I've been wanting to get back on this deck, so this is something that I've had in the back of my mind um, since I've been seeing this the crazy Halka Fibrax base deck that's basically just 60 engine cards that somehow managed to all work together. Um, I uh, We're going to jump into this deck profile here, and I'm going to go over some things about this deck, and we're going to also talk about how I feel like Dark Magician has more issues than one, uh, especially right now. So uh, before we get started, uh, as always, make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe. It just motivates me to make more Dark Magician content, more Yu-Gi-Oh! Journey, more hero content, things of that nature. And also, if you are new here, don't forget that we are doing a play set of Magician Souls from Brothers of Legend giveaway for achieving our goal of 1,000 subscribers. We are so close. We hit over 900 this morning, so we are on the home stretch to 1,000 subscribers. That is definitely going to be coming up soon. You want to make sure that you get your name in the pot for the chance to win a playset of Magician Souls. So, without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump into this deck profile. So, starting off, we have two copies of Apprentice Illusion Magician, two Ash Blossoms, one Dark Magician Girl, three Effect Veiler, two Edledge the Golden Lord, three Ghost Ogre, three Gears to the Orcus Mech Knight, one Magician's Rod, three Magician Souls, Two Dark Magician, one Red Eyes Blank Dragon, three Illusion of Chaos, three Cursed Eldland, three Dark Magic or two Dark Magical Circle, one Magicalized Fusion, one Magician Salvation, three Preparation of Rites, three Red Eyes Fusion, one Eagle Booster, one Hornet Drones, one Engage, three Soul Servants, uh, three Conquistador, three Scarlet Sanguine, two uh, Eternal Soul. 3 Hequero, and 3 Imperm. Going to the extra deck, we have 1 Master of Chaos, 2 Dragoons, 1 Dark Magicians, 1 uh, Dingirisu. Um, <clears throat> we also have 1 Access Code, 1 Dark the Dark Charmer, 1 Galatea, 1 Link Spider, 1 Link Karibo, 2 Predaplant, 1 Selene, um, 1 Kagari, and 1 Kaina. So, one of the biggest issues that there is right now with Dark Magician is the fact that every deck is playing i feel like more hand traps than i've than i've seen in quite some time um i have not resolved predaplant verte anaconda in weeks um even the dragoon that i summoned through red eyes fusion uh at least eight times out of ten ends up just getting destroyed by forbidden droplet um so i think dark magician itself this is a very hard format to be playing Dark Magician. It's pro and probably the hardest format uh, to play the deck in since I have been playing the deck. So I think that you have to compensate for that right now. You notice that we're playing... Basically, the deck is one gigantic engine. So Girasu is kind of like our uh, pseudo called by the grave because they can either ash the effect and if they don't we'll just dump another copy of himself. Uh, he's a one card uh, Verte, he's a one card Dark which can pretty much result in like a link climb into like Selene into access code. Uh, he's a one card Galatea into Dingirisu to protect like Eternal Soul or out a problematic card. Uh, we max out on like a lot of the best hand traps. Uh, Ash, Valor, Ogre, uh, these are just some of the most relevant ones right now, and I think that they're very, very good. You could also, you could make room for Nib, like you could cut Ogre and play Nib, you could cut Valor and play Nib, uh, while also playing Imperm as well, but I think the deck very much struggles to keep up right now, and I'm not even 100% sure if th these are the right ratios, like I might honestly end up going with something like, uh, like Ghost Bell over Valor, just because of how much the deck really just hard loses to Phoenix Enforcer. So this might actually be better than Valor. Um, you could try either one. The only ones I definitely keep are Ash and Imperm. 
And I've always been a person that said that the deck didn't need to play hand traps, but I feel like it's really hard to make floodgates work right now with Phoenix Enforcer. And I mean, you could even go as far as like trying to cut Ghost Ogre. Um, you could cut like Ogre. Oops, I accidentally cut Girasu. Like you could cut Ogre and you could play like three skill drain. Because this is one of the few uh, floodgate traps that really can help deal with Phoenix Enforcer. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you could build this. And I don't really think either way is right or wrong. So you notice I've switched the deck around a little bit. Um, through talking about this just to show you that a lot of the cards really are interchangeable. Uh, it just depends on like your local meta, what you're expecting, because right now there's not a solid answer to the meta. I feel like every deck is just a hodgepodge of hand traps that are just um, good at certain times. Certain times they're not. You know, everyone plays the adventure package with X engine and the decks, like these crazy 60 card decks, they either fire off or they don't. So it's one of the first formats I've seen where that's really just the case with almost everything. But um, we have a lot of similar engines to like the base deck, like where we're playing the uh, the Eldritch cards, we're playing Illusions, we're playing Souls, and uh, the synergy here is really nice. So like the Souls being able to like send these to draw, and then these cards like replace themselves and give you more beaters. Um, you know, Eldritch being able to send stuff like Dead Circles, uh, Dead Salvation, um, you know, anything like that. So Golden Lord does have some good synergy in the deck, but. Um, I've been looking for a way to compensate for the current meta, and I just don't think Pure Dark Magician at 40 cards is consistent enough to be able to keep up in today's meta at all, and that's the first time, if you're a long-time watcher, it's the first time I've said that on this channel, and I just think it's true. I've tried every way to make like a 40-card Pure Dark Magician deck work, and I think we have to go over 40. I think we have to play the best hand traps we can play, and I think we have to make um, make do with the best traps that we can play. I don't think that Verte Anaconda Turbo is going to cut it anymore because here, here's the reason. So most decks, their ending combo is Verte. So after they've given you so many points to where you say, I have to Imperm here, I have to Ash here, I have to Affect Valor here, and they just end on Verte, Send Fusion, Destiny, Summon, DP, where one of our first lines is, say, like, Souls, Rod, Verte. And then they just negate Verte, and you just pass pretty much on nothing. Um, and it seems like almost every time I activate Ref, my opponent has Ash. So I just think the deck needs something to help it keep up. And I don't know, I'm not saying that this is the correct route to go, um, but... You know, Dark Magician itself as an engine, we've been over this before. Like, I just want you guys to see just, like, how large the Dark Magician engine by itself is. And, like, how much room uh, in, like, a 40-card main deck, like, just Dark Magician takes up. We're going to count Red Eyes as a Dark Magician card because it basically is. So we're going to move all this stuff up here. And just to show you here, I also count Prep. Um, Prep's pretty much always a 3 of, but um, IOC... A lot of times, he will just play two. Um, let's see. I think we're going to say three ref because most pure builds play three ref. And we won't even we won't even include the Sky Striker package. Oh my gosh, Ash Blossom is being a pain in my ash. Ha 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 ha. Okay, so we got Eternal Soul. And we have Magician Salvation. Is that everything? Did I miss anything here? Okay, so the Dark Magician package literally just by itself takes up all of this room. Just by itself, so... So we got 10, 20, um, 28 cards that are just the Dark Magician cards. And this is like minimalizing... Uh, I'm sorry, Engage, I don't know why this is up here. Uh, so 27 cards. Um, or is it 26? Oh my gosh. Okay, 26 cards counting is hard guys 26 cards that are just dark magician cards so that means that you only have 14 cards to play with so even if you go and try things like you swap one apprentice for a tamias the united dragon or you know if you cut one eternal soul or you cut an ioc for seravis it's not really changing the fact that your your deck is all dark magician like none of these cards truthfully really accomplish much by themselves um, in fact, most of these are actually just bricks. Like, these are bricks. Uh, 
Like everything that's like not souls, IOC, prep is like a brick. And even still, like for Dark Magician, Souls isn't as powerful as it is in like the base deck because it has so many extenders that it just breaks Magician Souls. While we just don't have extenders that are great, like we have um, Apprentice, but we have to discard a card. We don't just have cards that just extend for free. Um, something else that you could try is like the Cybers Gadget package. I was looking at this. It's like the Cybers Gadget. Uh, the Link Disciple, and then the other Link too, which kind of like lets you kind of fix your hand. That might be better than Garasu. Um, so that's something else that you can think of as well. Uh, it's just multiple one card Predator Plant Verte Anaconda engines because um, Verte is is obviously still a good card, but I don't feel like playing just every single card as an engine to go into Verte is reliable enough right now. To be able to actually compensate for the deck's overall lack of power. So, getting back on the fact that we have, you know, 26, 27 cards in our deck that are just all engine cards, we need something to compensate for that. And when you're just putting in like 12, me personally, I've never been able to open up the perfect hands of like Dragoon, Eternal Soul, Circle, plus like one or two other interruptions. It's like always. I, they negate my Red Eyes Fusion, so I have like Eternal Soul Circle, or I have Dragoon, but I don't have Eternal Soul Circle. I never get that perfect setup, uh, hardly ever, and that's just kind of like my luck as a player. Uh, like I'm the guy that even playing here, playing 60 cards, uh, I still draw Dark Magician Girl like probably 4 out of 10 hands, uh, even in 60. So that's just how I am as a player, um, and it's just I've just accepted that. But... I don't give up hope because I do think that any deck can work in any format, but you have to adapt. And this is the skeleton of how this deck is going to have to adapt to be able to keep up in the meta moving forward. And we're gonna have to do we're gonna have to go out of our comfort zone. We're gonna have to play other engines, we're gonna have to play other trap cards. Uh, you could try playing 50, 60 card Dark Magician with like other traps like Ice Dragon's Prison, Dogmatica Punishment, uh, Skill Drain. Uh, you know, you can even go as far as playing stuff like Get Out, etc. But um, these right here are pretty generic. They replace themselves. They're excellent cards to use for souls. Uh, you get to take advantage of Eldritch the Golden Lord uh, in this deck. So I think that this might be the start. We're going to go and organize this deck again. I think this might be the start of where we need to be as a deck. Because if you've been keeping up, I posted the list that was very unique and very different a few weeks ago. It's almost at 4,000 views. And... That list was playing like Black Metal Dragon, it was playing Girasu, I was playing the Striker Package, it was playing all these cards that resulted in Verte, but really no follow-up defense past that. So it was basically like, summon Verte, play Verte, pray. And you know, you can play things like Cross Out Designator to try to help this. I mean, I'm playing the Eagle Booster, but it just goes back into the fact that most of the time, when half of your deck is making Verte versus playing three cross out, normally you just don't ever have the cross out for uh, that situation because you have more cards that generate Verte than you do cards that protect Verte. And, um, you know, if you wanted to try to go more protection for Verte, you could cut a card, like you could potentially cut like one IOC and play um, the Cerevis Ancient and Ascended, you could do that just to have a little bit more protection through prep. Uh, do keep in mind that Ghost Bell is starting to see more play, and you can Ghost Bell prep of rights. Uh, that's happened too. So just keep that in mind. You'll also notice in the extra deck, I don't play Artemis. Uh, I've ragged on people for the entirety of my channel, uh, Loza and myself both for not playing Artemis, but that is simply because I only play one Magician's Rod because I'm dedicating my normal summon to Girasu um, just in an attempt to be able to use Verte um, because at least in a build like this, if the Verte is negated, we actually have ways that we can actually live uh, instead of just immediately just getting OTK'd. So if you play three Rod, you play it in tangent with Artemis 100%. Uh, never play three Rod without playing Artemis. Um, you know, if you wanted to play Artemis, I'm not going to say it never comes up with one because every now and again it can. You could easily cut like any of these. Like this package is good, but it doesn't come up a lot. I do just play it because it can happen going second. But yeah, so do your own take on this. Like I think 
I think this is good. I think this can work. Um, you know, you can mess around with these ratios. Like you could try like two eld land with like two of each of these. I think sanguine's probably always three. You can cut one eternal soul because you're technically you're technically playing three eternal souls because you play salvation. Um, you know, I've even almost went as far as cutting dark magician girl um, and replacing it with like mahad or mana. And you know, I think that it there's infinite possibilities with the deck. Uh, IOC is a really good card. It kind of helps you prevent bricking. You can put your bricks back in your deck. So this is what we're going with. This is what we're going to be testing going forward. I'm going to try out the different ratios. Uh, we're going to see if we even need to be playing like another normal summon or if we're just going to go to playing three rod. Um, and we might try out like that Cyber gadget guy and see how that works. And um, yeah, so I want to encourage everyone to not be afraid to go out of your comfort zone and try different things, put together a crazy deck, see if it works. Make sure that the decks that you build from scratch do have some synergy with each other. Obviously, this deck essentially playing nine copies of Magician Souls is nine and 60 cards of uh, Magician Souls that um, synergize well with pretty much every one of the Eldritch uh, traps and spells. And... I think that this this can work. I've been having some success with it, and we're going to keep testing, keep trying things out. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope that you are happy to see the return of Dark Magician support. And, uh, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like, hit the sub button. Uh, like I said, I am so close to 1,000 subscribers, and we want to get that Magician Souls giveaway so that one lucky person can get a play set of Magician Souls. So thank you all for watching, and we'll be back again very soon with more Dark Magician support. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next one.